Okay, everybody, so we are back for the main CBC podcast. Of course, if you missed the last one, we're doing two this week. The last one was the Endgame spoiler cast, which I hope you guys checked out because um, we talk about uh, pretty much everything. And uh, we're going to touch upon a lot of the fallout of uh, Endgame and what it means for the future of the MCU, as you can see by the topics. So, of course, I am your host, Armin, and uh, you guys can find me at Arminis and, of course, just comic book cast. Google it, and uh, you'll find everything and what we're doing. I'm here with Mitch. What's up? You can find me at Mitch692. And, of course, Shay. Hey, guys. You can find me at Mache1602, primarily on Instagram, because I always forget to tweet. And uh, <laughs> for those wondering, Tristan is out this week. He's got a case of the end games, and he got sick. <laughs> So. I was actually wondering, because when you <laughs> sat there and you introduced me for the last show, I got real confused, and that's why I stumbled about, I was like, oh, oh, I got, I have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so used to Tristan being first. Yep. I am. But yeah. yeah, no, he, he got a bad case to the end He game. was a casualty yeah. of Endgame. <laughs> See, we're, we're the Captain Americas here, we're powering through it, like nothing, nothing will stop. Not, nothing stopped us, but uh, yeah, so um, let's get into the uh, main show. First up. Hand. MCU time travel. Um, slight spoilers. as well. I'll say slight spoilers. There's going to be spoilers here. When you yeah. get into time travel, it, it, let's be real. It doesn't work in real life, so you just make no. it up as you go along. That's kind yeah. of the key here. But we're going to talk also, about it and um, see what we got. So speaking of real life, they use the real life theories. Yes. And that's why people are confused. Yes, mm-hmm. the movie tells you, forget everything you, know, you think you know about time travel. We're going to actually use... What physicists well, think time travel would be. Like. I mean, yeah. they make sure of that because everybody thinks of time travel with Back to the Future. And because yeah. sure that's they, like, you know, the one. They put, they make a point being like, Back to the Future lied to me. Like, <laughs> it, it really is like how we're all thinking. We're like, this is these movies. And they made literally a list of all of the movies. Why he said Die Hard, I don't know. Are they <laughs> Because like... Die Hard's the most famous time travel movie ever made. Like, why wouldn't you mention that? Um... So, Mitch, do you want to tell us how this works in the simplest way, if, um, if you can? Uh, not particularly. Because uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, I haven't got my whiteboard ready. But, right. Essentially, like the, the theories they use and everything, what into like take this scene with the ancient one where she's talking to Banner. Yep. Right, and she she shows the timeline. That straight line in the MCU is made up of every single possibility happening at once. Yep. So it's all concurrent, and the Infinity Stones. You know, I said, think of like um, a cable comb. Mm-hmm. Right. They, they, they go through all the possibility threads, and then they cement one happening, like, and that's our timeline. Yeah, like there could be there could be more timelines. Maybe since it doesn't, but the movie was kind of wrong with its own rules in some cases. But I think that's on purpose. Yeah. And, um. So you know you can't then go back to your past because time is linear, mm-hmm. and that's another, another theory that they use as well. You know, time is linear to the individual. It's also um how you perceive time. You know, time could be as quick as you want, which of course we know happens in real life because, you know, look at dogs. Dogs are seven times faster, they perceive time seven times faster. Uh-huh. But that's, that's like, oh, I'm just trying to, I should have made notes for this. I forgot. What? But that's essentially how it works. You know, when they go, as Banner says as well, when they go back, they're not actually going back to the past movie. They're going back to like a, a past reality, like of a, of, a, of, a, yeah, of a possibility. Exactly. Which is made by the quantum realm. Yep. That's why they use the quantum realm. Well, that's why the quantum realm is so unique because it sets a rule of what they can do, right? Like, mm. it has this ability and they use it. Also it also limits. It does. Like, they can't do that alone. Exactly. I think what's smart about it is the quantum realm defines the way it works and you can't mess around with it because it's like, remember Doctor Strange, right? He could use the time stone. And just metal by looking into the future and going through the past and rewinding time when he sets a, uh, you know, like a resurrection point almost, right? This time travel is different to the point where you going back in time, yes, but as they mentioned, the Infinity Stones hold everything. So if the stone isn't put back, then then, reality starts to cascade into different... And that's also the only way you can make a branch. Exactly. So like Loki taking a test fact and going doesn't make a branch. Right. Like there's no, no branches there. Cap going back to the 70s or the 40s, where actually ever goes back to, doesn't make a branch. Yep. And that bit's confusing because it's supposed to be confusing. Because they're gonna fill in the gaps with 
some yeah. of the stuff that's coming, which yeah. makes sense when you really start thinking about it. You're like, okay, well, the things happen, and here's how they are, and here's these moments. But what people have to remember is, in the modern time, the Infinity Stones are destroyed. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So, which is a major thing people have forgot. Yes, Our timeline is. as of right of from 22 days after Infinity War is not stable. Yep. It's all over the place. So mm -hmm. this could possibly be the um the gateway to bring in anything and everything. So yep. a unstable timeline. Hey, Deadpool. What what do you mean? Like <laughs> oh, like no. it's all there. Like <laughs> they've opened it up so they could literally be like, well, it's an unstable timeline. What do you want? Like here's yeah. here's these characters from another world. Like, okay, sure, whatever. You and, know? and like a lot of people are going like, well, why can't they jump to the future? It's like but the future like where the stones cement the timeline, uh -huh. the future hasn't happened yet. Exactly. Yeah. So you can't go to something that hasn't happened. And like, right. you know, they use the Mobius strip. You can only go to what's been, like, you know, a location that actually exists. If the possibility hasn't been cemented yet, you can't physically go there. Uh -huh. but, that's why Thanos was able to go to where they were and what exactly. they had. Exactly. Yep. Which also why, you know, they put the stone back there that you know, there isn't a timeline where Thanos, Gamora, and Nebula just suddenly vanished because that branch got clipped. Right, like, that, like, that's fine. Like, but we we you can like you can say that it's made of possibilities because of Strange looking at like fourteen million six hundred five of them. So mm. you know you can see into the possibilities, but you can't go to it because it hasn't happened. Exactly, and that's kind of like a lot of the important stuff that's like cemented in there. It's like oh, it's the little dialogue and notes that they're dropping in there. And remember, mm. they've said multiple times the future. There's a lot of stuff in the quantum realm. And dialogue and things are going to pay off. So, mm. like, it's clearly going to be really important. And specifically with the destruction of the stones and how they affect time, that's got to be a major factor going forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can also slide... I just keep thinking of things. You can also slide time through something like they did with Scott and how the yeah. time... St like how, or how they use the time stone. Yep. Like, you know, sliding something through time isn't sliding time through them. Right. No, they make that very distinct, that those two things are different. Yes, they do. It's complicated, it's convoluted, it's supposed to be, it's time travel. Right. Yeah. You can't make time travel easy because, well, it's complex. It, I was going to say, it, it doesn't exist. There's no right or wrong answer with time travel. Right. No. The, the cable comb metaphor is like the only way I can really, like, in my head make sense of it. It's like, oh, it's, you know, that, that's just the stones, and mm -hmm. that's how... Everything works, but, and obviously, like, everything's personification. In the do we world. want to talk about what the Russo said about time, though, and how the Captain America ending works? Because sure, sure. Boy, that's a uh, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, Which I mean, it, you know, it makes sense. Like yeah. he, he he goes back, he puts the stones back, he then jumps back to the forties, which we know it's the forties because there's music playing in the background. Mm. And um, he obviously he lives his life out there. They say he has as long as he needs to, so he yep. he has another like seventy odd years. He's now one hundred eighty five. <laughs> so he's an old man now yep. and um he makes a jump back why he doesn't appear in the same spot he left you could say it's the unstable timeline right you could but say he changed location also their big thing is um he goes back in time and they said he lives in an alternate timeline but then when he jumps he comes back to the current timeline but yeah. you can again the time is unstable now due to time travel. So yeah. they just confirmed multiple timelines now exist because say, of everything. With the multiple timeline bit, I don't know if that's the right word they should have used because technically it's just a different possibility. Exactly, yeah. No, it's it's a weird one. Um, no, not to say that there isn't multiple timelines in the MCU now because that'd be kind of dumb if there wasn't. Like The super flow is a thing for Marvel. So I don't know, it's a complicated one. I It's... I think it's an intentional question they brought up. Yeah, I could. Yeah, it's a very like. There's a lot of this movie is intentional. A lot of the setup is intentional. I think that's just another one people have missed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are going, "Well, the grandfather paradox means this," and it's like they tell you that doesn't work. Yeah, that's not a thing in this thing. You know, the EPR paradox is one. You know, they use a Mobius strip for God's sake and all this stuff. Like, you know? they bring up a lot of actual theoretical science. Which makes world. sense because ever since like the MCU started, they've been talking with real scientists to be like, well, 
yeah. what happens here what happens with this what happens with that so and, so, and what they said is what hulk says you you go back to your past that past becomes your present and future yep so it's kind of there like mm. yeah they're not they're not days of future pasting in which i've seen no. a lot of people be like days of future past did it better i'm like they did it better because they didn't try to explain it and they didn't care about time that's yeah. because in days of future past magneto lifts the white house and makes it float or like the stadium or whatever the hell he does i can't even remember that garbage and like people are like oh yeah it's like but that's never mentioned again and yeah, they just ignore yeah. it in every other future it, like that's that's so stupid like at least here they try to make a definitive effort to explain it to you and yeah it's a little complex but it will be played around with more in the future definitely like oh yeah yeah there's literally a movie coming out next year that's i would i'm putting everything i have on that movie dealing with this yeah yep no uh, we'll, we'll get into it in the next topic if you want to jump there straight now i don't know but uh... um i guess let's talk about the phase four setup in avengers endgame what's it all mean and where are they going well titanos Eternals, clearly. So mm -hmm. we're both on the same page. Chronos, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's literally in the the cosmic like abstract pantheon for Marvel. He deals with time. He's oh. an eternal that like ascended to that level, kind of like how Thanos said in the comics. Yep. But so you know, we have an unstable timeline. What better to deal with it? We can't use Kang, or you can use Kang now. Uh, I don't know. Kang doesn't make sense with how no. they've done their timeline. No, no. But, um, you know, if you you can't. He, he's at the end of the future or end of the timeline how can you get back and well how can you even be there is a the thing like, right <laughs> it's it's i've been giving myself a headache all week over this one <laughs> but like chronos explains perfectly why they've left it as they have mm -hmm. and also I, I can i also say chronos because uh spoilers i spoke to jim sterling last week for the discussing film and he yep. kind of mentioned chronos so yeah he did <laughs> Which, that puts us into Eternals territory. But let's talk about what else we got. Um, obviously, Captain America is set up. Sam. Yeah. So uh, fully expect a name change for yes. that show. Yep. We can get more into that later on. Get the next topic. We're kind of jumping around a bit more here, but yeah. uh, name change. So let's, I guess, film future. Um, where does Shang Chi fall in this? I don't know. Right? We, we had that discussion of there's a potential that he's taking place during the five years um, between mm. the snap and where we are right now. Because if they do it that way, you can see how he was able to manipulate the fact that here's half of the universe is gone. And, and... kind of like this slower story doesn't need to be when all the other superheroes mm. are around, you know? I think it'd be a good place to pace it. Because here's for me. the here's the thing with how they've left it like they can either do it in the five year between infinity war and endgame or because the actual movies are now in 2023 uh -huh. they've said the next five years is phase four yeah so and which is 2023 so they can either just stop everything dead in time Mm -hmm. Not like literally said nothing that happens in the MCU, but like everything happens in 2023 until we get there, or they can fill out gaps. Right. And I think they're probably going to do a mixture of both. Yeah, yeah. I definitely feel that way because Black Widow prequel. <clears throat> but does it have to be a prequel? Yeah. Well, does it? You know, like she could have been brought back by Bruce. There's right. nothing saying she like the stones can't bring. Why well, if they back, want to you know? fudge around with the uh, snap? I guess. Yeah, you know, like let's look at Secret Empire, which Endgame kind of takes a lot from. Mm -hmm. Like she dies in that, she comes back. No explanation. Yeah, like, you can do that. You can like play about. It's essentially a way to reset the character. Like right, a bit of your soul's in the Soul Stone, but you're back here. Mm -hmm. Like let's reinvent you slightly. But... Right. So, That's just one possibility. It's probably going to be a prequel. If I'm, honest, I'm assuming but... she's dead because they want to keep that and have her prequel, you know, build mm. upon her character, which... Well, especially because look at all the cast members that they've already confirmed. It's like, I don't feel like some of these people would fit where they're Yeah, going David Harbour, I'm like, I definitely think they're going Taskmaster now. Like, like it, I think, I, I, I think Taskmaster is definitely. Oh, yeah. Yep. Because oh. it, it gives you then the availability to actually love a character that is no longer here yep mm. which... and build them up more so if you watch it in the future you kind of get retroactively like oh yeah you know like and i'm okay with that and i want to know what happens at budapest yep see i was on I, when nate that first was mentioned in like avengers or whatever it was like i was on that train and then over the years i kind of got off of it i was like i don't need to know 
They just I, keep I, I mentioning really, it. I, like, just, just keep it in mystery, but this movie, I'm like, I want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with when the fact that they were in the thing. <laughs> this is very different than Budapest. Well, what happened in Budapest? <laughs> so, Jesus. I mean, you know, they're setting that up, but also Doctor Strange 2. I think he's going to be one of the most important things going forward. Like, Oh, yes. Dude, yeah. like, he was yeah. directly linked with the stone, and now it's gone. Like, you know how mm. much pressure that puts on him? Like, oh. Well, like, as as the ancient one says, like they haven't got their weapon against like the forces of darkness anymore. Uh -huh. So, what does that mean for Dormammu? Like, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. my boy is coming. You know how how is he going to stuff him this time? He can't do the same trick twice. Everything's coming up, Dormammu. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, it's like also we have though Black Panther two, which oh. I feel Black Panther two. Um, we were having this discussion, or me and I, that it's what happened partway during the snap that they did not have a king for five years right yep. but yep. also yep. then the repercussions after like yes we saw mbaku fight alongside him could it have been only he was fighting alongside him because he knew it was it's the, for right the fate thing of the ga do? galaxy and universe you know like yeah but the thing is it's like yeah the king was gone. Somebody else took leadership. Mm. They probably Ooh. had new rules because less population. And like yeah. now he's back and they're just like, oh, we got to accept you because your name. Like, OK, so it, it, th it that snap throws their entire like um, line of succession out of whack because not only does yep. the child go, Shuri goes. Yep. Shuri would have been next in line. Of course, there's no one else next in line. For exactly. that, so it must it had to have gone to the mother. So what does what that I mean when they thinking. haven't? Like, what, what does it mean when they haven't got a Black Panther? Because mm -hmm. she's way too old for that. Unless, like, it's Super Soldier stuff and she can, like, uh, Like, good be, day be <laughs> given M'Baku the ability to be it. But then yeah. if you sit there and you look at M'Baku's character in, from the first movie, he was very, like, sure, here's this. You could give this to me, but I understand my people and what the people of Wakanda need. They need the actual black panther not just giving right. it to me but in a power struggle in yeah. a power void everything's you know thrown out of whack so we also I... perfect chance to bring in namor yep so oh look wakanda's like in disarray they, exactly. they have no established like royalty or government anymore it's time to and chuck chuck a see him which right. also makes me think like whatever wakanda was doing like they had the outreach program right and they had all this that they were mm -hmm. starting across the world suddenly wakanda probably pulled back like they're like we yeah, don't need to do yeah. this we don't have resources hell half our people are gone why should we be focused i was on gonna you? say like probably every country pulled back on everything exactly like the way you see like everything's shut down yep yeah the, that was such a moment when you have like steve doing his his group mm -hmm. and they're inside the met stadium and it's empty oh yeah and they just left the cars there and when <sighs> when paul rudd's character i've already forgot scott is going through he, like everything's the same like because you have half the people gone and i mean yeah. our earth like people don't understand this to make you one cup of coffee that coffee before you drink it goes through about two thousand people's hands from the people picking it to you know, like sorting to sorting it, to making sure it gets to a facility, to processing the facility, to bagging, to shipping. Imagine suddenly half the population goes away. Commerce on Earth is thrown into flux. Like, yep. Yep. I, like I really can't wait to see how Black Panther is affected by that. And I think that will be the film that sees most of it. Because do you, do you know what else is going to have be affected by that? Uh... Spider Man. Exactly. Yeah. Why is why is Pepper so involved in the homeless shelves? Because it's a homeless crisis. Oh. They're just they're going to come back and there's going to be nothing for them. Oh they have no gosh. jobs, no homes, no nothing. Yep. Yeah, it it's going to be really weird because we've been talking about like, well, you think about it. It's been it's five years, so mm. the the kids haven't a the kids that were snapped haven't aged five years, but you have kids that did survive and live throughout those five years but half of the teachers are gone half of the students are gone so we honestly know very very little of what the world was like in yeah. five years but all we do know is spider-man is after it right. so how they're going to deal with a lot of those repercussions which is why i think when you look at the students on the field trip which are all the smart ones from peter class 
why half of them are missing because they've aged up and now it makes sense you're like oh that's where that girl Cindy no, disappeared to I'm I like, didn't uh... they haven't the Russo said that they they got snapped as well so the main main cast yes like you know Flash like, obviously like, like Mary Jane mm-hmm. um, Ned or that yeah. yeah yeah the plot convenience just like the Avengers didn't get snapped yeah. I mean to, to be fair like yes it's convenient and it's one hell of a convenience but 50% of the entire population of the universe I'd say you're probably gonna go yeah there's a pretty good odd uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's 3.5 billion people gone on this planet. Like, mm-hmm. Odds are. Our pl- and creatures. Dogs, true, cats, true. chickens, yeah. like food stock. Like... Yeah, that's that's the frightening thing that a lot of people don't realize. It's like, I want them to explore that. That's what mm-hmm. I need, you that, know? And why, I think they're going to. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why Scott, when he was just like, uh, g- guys, like, there's birds outside. Half of the birds, half of the insects, like creatures that are living half of it's gone so imagine different parts of the world right now are potentially no longer livable i mean because you can't have you don't have the ants and the bugs and everything populating those areas i mean a quick one that comes off to the top of my head is africa's overpopulation and famine due to overpopulation suddenly half of them are gone what happened in the rest of africa like that's that's powerful storytelling, you know, mm. measures right there that you can really explore. And at the same time, you know, the movie does bring up the fact, you know, there's cleaner water, there's less ships going everywhere, you know, yep. there's wells in the Hudson now. Like, yeah. it, there's, they, they, they're, they're, they're going to play about with that, like, duality of the situation. Oh, like, yeah, yes, they are. Yes, it was horrific, and then coming back is, is a great thing, but it's also going to be, like, just as horrific as the snap initially. That's why yeah. Namor is going to be like, hey, you realize the Earth was cleaner when half of you were gone? What happens when I try to sink you? Like... <laughs> you know, my boy, he's gonna be fighting for whales in in the Hudson. That's, that's what fighting he's doing. for whales in the Hudson. I, I, I'm gonna support. I'm gonna sign his petition. I don't care about you guys. <laughs> gonna, that's what's gonna happen. It's like we're gonna be at the the movie theater when Namor has been like confirmed gonna be in a movie, and Armin's just gonna be there with a sign, "Fight for the Hudson uh, Whales." Hudson Whales sign my paper. Um, and it's gonna be him with a sign, like as a protester, and it's gonna be the funniest thing. And uh, only people who saw Endgame are gonna understand. Oh, well, at this point, oh. the world is, is we'll see Endgame. That's so, true. Um, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about, uh, I guess, another like small Fallout-ish, which is, I guess, the last one we can guarantee is happening soon. Guardians. Thor is part of the team. Yeah. yeah. Also, speaking of Thor, you know, we know there's a Thor four being pitched, or a oh. four if you. Want to mix the two together? Yeah. So does that mean Thor is going to be Valkyrie as a Jane Foster type yes, of character? Yes, please. I that's what I would prefer. Not don't bring Thor back. Allow him to have a concluded thing. Yeah, with... have him go on with the Guardians. Finally, not have a destiny. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, would, it would literally undo his character arc. Like you know, he's being who he's supposed to be. Not. Or he's being who he is, not who he's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. Like his mom said. Yeah, um, yeah no, I would. I want to see how the Valkyrie is now the royalty and king of Asgard. And like, those are the things I really want to see. And I want to see not Jane Foster maybe come back, but something she, along she, she that She barely line. came back for the movies it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean... Guardians are clearly going to search for Nebula, or not Nebula, Gamora. That's Gamora, yeah. definitely the plot. I don't know what more we could ex- Which, Which, shout out to myself here, going to big it up. I kind of called it. <laughs> uh, I said two weeks in a row that it's going to be about Gamora not being Gamora. Yeah. Sure, I was kind of wrong. I said about getting out of the Soul Stone. You can't get her out of the Soul Stone because it's gone. But, yeah. but we have a different Gamora. So, yeah. so shout out to I'm out okay to with that, which I'm... Um, I guess that'll bring us to the end of the movie side where we'll transition the final topic here in this podcast and uh, what we got to talk about is the post endgame future that involves everything on the tv side now there is actually more tv stuff in development than there are film things like which is crazy. yeah it's Hype. nuts there's about 20 different things right now that we know of yep um, it's crazy and what people don't realize is the russos and disney have said these six to eight episode shows are more or less movies. We'll be able to tell complete story arcs with these. So you're pretty much looking at like a trilogy condensed into a, you know, like miniseries. It's like, yeah. dude, 
I am ready for this. And as he said, all leading up to their next movie appearance. These guys aren't out of the movies just yet. So Scarlet Witch, she's coming back. Yep. Well, that's not the last you see in the movie. I mean, Captain America, Sam Wilson, he's coming back. He's going to come back as Cap. Like, it's... Now, what's the... What are they going to call that show? It's got to be Captain America and Bucky, surely. I feel like it's not going to be. I feel like it's going to be Bucky and Falcon because Sam's going to be resilient of becoming Captain America and it's going to be Bucky's journey of telling him how he is and has already been Captain America. Yeah, I think there's got to be a little inner conflict with taking on the mantle, but he'll take it obviously because he Mm. realizes the world needs a Captain America. So I think maybe they call it, I don't know, Winter Soldier or Falcon and Winter Soldier like they currently are, but maybe they'll change it. I don't know. Mm. I feel like they may change it um, for season two (laughs) because Mm. by the end of the season, Sam will have accepted and become. Well, this. that's an interesting question. Are they going to do season twos with these? I would. I mean, or they are could they going to be, be one and done. Dance. That'd be insane, though, because I assume these things are going to be so popular. Like, because yeah. like that would mean they have like nine films from just like three seasons. Yeah. Do that, which they're going to be more developed than what we just had. Yep. But it's. I don't know. Like, I suppose you could do it. Like, save the movies now for the new stuff. Right. And then well, the TV shows are all what. What people need to realize is Kevin Feige said the the last couple years, really, now, especially that they got Fox, if they need to, they will push out to four movies a year. But this mm-hmm. guarantees they don't have to. So, like, mm-hmm. we don't need Captain America 4. Why? Because Captain America is going to be a TV series while Cap can return in, mm-hmm. you know, like Captain Marvel 2 or something. I don't know, I'm just spitballing. Or Doctor Strange 2, right? Like, so it gives them the ability to open up the universe more to new franchises while the TV can carry on some of the other ones. And it's like, as they've said, they're not cheaper productions. Like, this ain't going to be, oh, here's your, you know, cheaper Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff. This is, like, legit connected. Like, you have oh, yeah, to watch yeah. these if you want the full story, like yeah. you do with the movie. The, the, like, these okay. are, like, integral. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is like missing A's of Ultron or Civil War. Like, yeah. if you miss those two, you get kind of screwed for Infinity War and Endgame. But yep. this is... This, 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 yeah. Keep getting tongue tied. These are that level. So, mm-hmm. oh. and there's there's a lot of interesting things so, coming. I mean, on top of just that, right? Just today, we oh, know that gosh. Marvel TV is expanding. First up, we're gonna get Ghost Rider. Like, yeah. what? Yes. <laughs> Which no, it's not a it's not a reboot. Right. Like variety's right and wrong on that. It's think of the Dark World to Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. It's it's that kind of it's a soft ish. Look, reboot. um. Here's how it is. Remember before um, when the Council appeared in the Avengers, and uh, I believe was it Booth Powers? Is that his name? I think so, yeah. He was cast for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we knew he was going to play the Council member, but many people are like, no, it's a new character, and even Marvel spun it as he might be a new character, but he appears and, oh, oh, he's the Council guy who's working for Hydra. Like, Mm. what you have to understand is the Hulu series is picking up the Ghost Rider, right? He has to be a self-contained story. So if you didn't watch Agents yeah, of S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. you can get into this book. Oh, okay. It's the same character. If it was a new Ghost Rider or a reboot, why would you get Gabriel Luna back? Yeah. Like, it exactly, yeah. It, so yeah. it's a continuation. They're just... It's different. Like, it's yeah. going to be it's, a full series like, focus on him. It's the Dark World of Ragnarok. That, that's yep. literally, you know, ignore what happened before. It still happened, but we're going forward. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like how they're going to start that one is his... It's going to be the first episode will be a little recap of his story that was already told through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. In case you don't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which a whole bunch of people still don't. I don't know why, but I love (laughs) the series. Um, And they're going to sit there and be like, okay, here you go. And then after even maybe even halfway through episode one, that's when it's going to continue. And it's his own story of now this is what he's doing with his Mm. time to avenge his little brother and it's gonna be so amazing because now it shows what like you guys have been saying forever they're gonna put all the darker stuff on hulu oh boy so yeah, yeah. Yeah. not only are we getting these two series we could potentially get moon knight which a lot of people were like, uh, upset I about possibly you might get an announcement by the end of the year mm, possibly like, i mean 
Possibly. Not just that. It's like you open up with Ghost Rider, and people are like, yeah. Then you're bringing in Hellstrom, right? Who's they're gonna have a guy and a girl and, in that. and his sister and his which, sister, right? She's supposed to be called Satana, but they're taking the Satan bit out, so just Anna. Yeah, which I, I'm, I'm certainly gonna twist that, but you know, they're taking I mean, an L, so it's not Hellstrom, right. it's Hellstrom. So. Which I'm fine with what they're doing, honestly, because it's like that's great, and clearly you can tell this is the setup for a bigger payoff because. Mm-hmm. Just the way oh, yeah. it was announced yeah. on Marvel.com, you're like, oh boy, I see what I see what you're doing. Here. I say they specific, one of the first things they say is the spirits of vengeance. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I they they've, they've had it in the works for a while. It was it was going to be on Netflix, I think, like where they do like a this sort of a thing like with defenders. Right. But they they have like a little mystical side of it. Um, expect a couple of other people to come into this it's not just going to be these two no definitely not i i, I think everyone can kind of gather one yeah no like, i think everyone knows the the one that begins with b as um as the I other said, one like i said it on twitter i think today like by the end of 2020 2021 disney plus will be doing what they said they're doing before bundling it with hulu for one cheaper price yep, yep. you're going to be paying 15 to 18 bucks for both you're going to be getting Marvel content, literally two to three shows to watch per week, all year long, no breaks. Like, yeah. there's yeah. going to be nonstop Marvel content. And the Hulu expansion, they're already doing three live action shows now. You think that's going to slow yeah. down? Like, no, no, no. Way. <laughs> you know, They have three live action shows and four animated shows. Yep. And it's about to get even bigger because yeah. they will be expanding that. They know that the Marvel catalog is endless. Like, and yeah. they've already said... X Men will be happening on TV and films. Like that's yeah, J- yeah. Jeff Loeb literally said it. They're going to be looking at X Men to goldmine. It's like, dude, we're going to be literally swimming in Marvel content. <laughs> yep. Like if you thought there was a like the, the superhero bubble is not bursting. It's about yeah. to get bigger than ever. Yeah. And, uh, Endgame yeah. proves this. Like, yeah. uh, nonstop. Yeah. Um, I'm excited but... because of the shows that we have currently right now already going on. Like. We have uh, Cloak and Dagger as well as Runaways, which both have been like renewed. And yeah, Runaways is coming to a third one. Uh, th- due to the ratings, they're saying more or less another Cloak and Dagger is guaranteed. I'm saying, so... I, I think Cloak and Dagger is in the bag, but hasn't actually been announced <laughs> yeah. yet. Yeah, so it's both of those, they even stated the TV series are happening after Endgame. So what are we going to get with and, them? Right, and don't forget. Disney apparently tried to do something with the Netflix shows, and Netflix was about to sue them. So yeah, yeah, um, which go- goes to what I've been saying. You know, I've been telling people for months they've been trying to get them back. The they moment, would not have been warned by lawyers if they were. The moment that the uh, two, like two year anniversary of Luke Cage's cancellation is up in twenty twenty one, Luke Cage will get announced for a new series. Oh, yeah. Isn't Luke Cage up next year? Because two... 2020, yeah. Oh, oh damn. I say because Jessica Jones and Punisher were cancelled this year. Right. The other Oof. three were cancelled last year, so it's 2020. So, it's like in 14 to 15 months, Luke Cage is coming on Hulu. Like, and I'm hoping Iron Fist as well. I would love to have a continuation right, just, of finishing I, I, Iron Fist is the first one they'll bring back. Mm-hmm. That's the furthest one I love at the minute, because I've been talking to... um, What's his name? Finn Jones. Mm-hmm. And he loves that role, like well, him and the mm, woman who played Colleen. Both of them loved these roles and are like they were devastated. And it's not only that. You notice that ABC picked up a series with Finn Jones as a lead right after he was canceled. It's like, now nah, we're keeping you at home, bro. Oh yeah, like, and then <laughs> and suddenly like he leaves that pilot because they were trying to get him back. Now yep. he hasn't got anything again. Like just put the dots together. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they're coming back. I mean. Like, three to four years from now, you're going to have most of the Defenders back, probably Punisher, and you're going to have, like, the Midnight Sun slash Spirits of Vengeance. We're going to be yeah. literally, like, ten shows deep into the darker Marvel universe. And that's just on Hulu. Yeah. <laughs> like, D- Disney Plus, you know, we, we know about some officially, but yeah. that list is huge. You know, there's Nick Fury, there's Talks of a War Machine 1, there's Sith oh. and the Warriors 3, there's tons. I can only get it's... so hard. <laughs> Like, it's going to be like 30 of these things. And that's kind of the thing, because Bob Iger said in an investor's call, Marvel and Star Wars are their most powerful brand, and they're looking Mm -hmm. to expand that. It's like, you're literally going to be looking in about five years from now, probably like, I I would say maybe 15 to 20 Marvel shows per year, on top of like three to four movies a year. 
Mm. Star yeah. Wars is going to be a bit further behind because they're taking that hiatus to rethink everything. Good, good. Which yeah. smart, you know, you've had a bit of a pushback on it. You know, yep. rethink everything. You know, turn the mo- the anthology movies into shows like the Mandalorian did. You know, Solo sorry. season one hype. Yeah, you know, we know they're doing Knights of the Old Republic. Yep. I compl- I completely like ignored the fact that you said Solo there and now it's on purpose. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, you, like... don't you ignore that. It's coming on the twentieth of this month. I'm telling you, a solo anniversary. They're gonna be like, we heard you are mean. Please stop harassing Ron Howard. <laughs> May twentieth, mute our mean on Twitter. It's right. true. <laughs> Listen for me, I'm folks. Just mute me on that day. <laughs> uh, um, but no, like. We're about to literally see a rise in Marvel TV. And hell, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., people are like, ah, it's going to get canceled. They're like, renew for two seasons. Nope. I yep. guarantee it's probably going to get another one or two seasons. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be the the best show that will be able to be that connective thread. And it was already the connective thread between the movies and TV. Yep. It's going to be continuing well, with being the TV what aspect. Gets, like, what makes me mad is people are like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is useless. It does serves no purpose. I'm like, you clearly don't watch it. Because yeah. it's huge. It like, explained all of what the movies didn't have time to do when it came to the downfall of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, they did more. And Hydra. And, and also, everything. people can't say the shows aren't canon anymore because Endgame literally just puts middle finger up. Yep. It's yeah. like, look, here's Jarvis. Dude, Spoilers. I freaked out when Jarvis showed up. Same. I was the only person in my show. Yeah, it was like different... three people at my showing. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> people were wondering, though, like in our showing, they heard the voice and they were like, I it, know that voice. Is, is that Paul Bettany? He's doing he's doing a really good Bettany impression. He did. Oh, yeah. He really <laughs> did, which was kind of amazing. Um, yeah. Which I guess will bring us to the uh, end of the Marvel TV. I was just, just going to... Uh, I, I thought of a different topic just like recently. Uh, like, where do you think phase four is? Heading? What do you think they're going to do? Where does four phase head? Um, honestly, the I future? think they, okay. they take a break from the phase villain for a, maybe a year or two, and they don't introduce them to like, I don't know, maybe Doctor Strange 2 or something. I think they need to just kind of live with these characters post the traumatic events, mm-hmm. right? Like, See, my thing is they're going to give it to us in the next movie. You think? Yeah. Because if you notice, there's no established Avengers team. Right. There's no Avengers right now. And we kind of have a power struggle. Mm -hmm. Like, Rhodey is in a a certain colored Iron Man suit. Yes, he is. It's red, white, and blue. Um, I reckon they're going to do Dark Avengers. We know that script was in development as well. Yeah, so it's like it's the perfect setup for you know. There's no Avengers. There, you no, know, there's well, there's no established Avengers team. Do you think Thunderbolt puts them together? No, I think Osborn. Oh yeah. Introduce Osborn as Spider Man. I like, mean, don't that's, don't have to have to let's like be real. Big thing. That five years he's had time to develop that tower, and by the time Peter uh, exactly. swings back, we're gonna see that Oscorp logo. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, like he takes over the Iron Man spot. You know, there's. There's talks that the uh, I'm going to call it Captain America and Bucky show because sure. that's what it, that's what it's to me now. Okay. Um, that that's going to have U.S. agent in it, so you've got a yes. Captain America there. Um, you could always bring back Minerva from Captain Marvel or something True. like that. You know, and just you know, he can go like, look, the world's in chaos. I'm going to be the one to bring it back. Right. And then you have your reason right there, and in in that way, it completely deals with the after effects of everything. It doesn't. So it's the Dark Avengers itself. using the need of the people, and they're fighting yeah, the yeah. scattered Avengers who can't. Man, yeah. that would be perfect. Ugh. That's that's what I think they're gonna do. I I could be way off, but to me, that makes the most sense for where they are right now. Yep. And that way, you can have your fourth Thor, and you can have your siege, and do that. That's right. true. So also, though, obviously, they sat there and they hinted towards it. They're going to eventually have the A Force, so mm-hmm. they'll have the all yeah, female yeah. team. Maybe the A Force forces to take them on in the movie, and that yeah. spins it up to the next A Force. Yeah, I'm, be... I'm gonna, I'm gonna say they call them the Valkyries. Okay, yeah, that would be like, awesome. Yeah, like if if Valkyrie's leading or has a new Asgard, right? Asgard needs a, a Valkyrie core. Now, so you just have all the women coming to be the Valkyries. Now we're ignoring the biggest factor going forward in Phase Four, right? Where oh. will they place the Inhumans reboot? Huh? Fantastic Four at the Anybody? end. Anybody? 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 Fantastic Four at the yeah. end. You know, I would love it if Fantastic Four showed up and yeah. they just scrubbed the Inhumans' existence. They yeah. go, no, this is where they exist. So it's like, that, that never happened before. No. It, especially because the only Inhumans like people understand 
are the Inhumans the only the small niche of people who are still watching Agents of Shield? Right. That is mm -hmm. the most canon currently of Inhumans. The population of people that actually watch the Inhumans TV show, unfortunately, is less than what are the people that watch Agents of Shield. I was oh, like, probably so... half the people that watch the Inhumans are right here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... We're literally on the show. Oh no. <laughs> like, oh. It's it, it's gonna be the easiest thing for Marvel to just be like, well, we're gonna sidestep this a smidge I and honestly, go from there. I find it interesting that what was it? Um. Who was the guy that directed the movie with Christian Bale? Adam McKay, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, I talked to Kevin Feige recently about a future Marvel movie, and he's like, Fantastic Four and Inhumans. I was like, what? Like, well, how, what? Like, I think maybe there is something to Inhumans that could happen, and yeah. I, I would like it if they did a redemption for that as a movie, because... Can we please bring the cast Br back? Bring back Ensign Mel. He's perfect on Star um, Trek, so... I, I think that's a can of worms. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. If you, you, you have to have it either way. If you have Ensign Mel back, you have to acknowledge a TV show. If yeah. you, you know, you could get someone better. Like, I, I like Ensign Mel's Black Belt. See, like, don't worry, because reality is shattered. Bring in an alternate version of the Inhumans and just be like, oh yeah, they needed a new home because their universe got destroyed. Um, They're now on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I'm, I'm you cool. You could honestly still pick up from where that movie or the TV show. No, Shay, at. because only three of us watched it. No, okay. But still, <laughs> you could potentially do it because they were at this random little facility up in upstate New York somewhere, and that's where their new home is. They could have sat there and been like, you know what? We understand and we can see the world is not ready for us. So we're going to just be here, kind of like Asgard. New Asgard is on new Earth. New Adelan in Hawaii. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's just... Hawaii. What they're, place? <laughs> they're in this area and they're keeping to themselves. People, I mean, outsiders aren't going to know that they're there. They're going to realize, here, the snap. Why did half our people girl. just come? And they're back now. Uh, it, I think it, realistically, if anything, they'll maybe introduce some sort of variant in the Fantastic Four because that's where yeah. he's got their stuff. I say, like, put them in the Himalayas. Right. I do that. But, okay, so quickly, um, X Men, they're coming. Oh, yes. The, it, the, we know it's a five year timetable. Deadpool, guarantee, will be first. He's. He's a coming to the MCU. So would you say Deadpool or Wolverine? Deadpool. It's, I mean, Deadpool's Cause, established. Because there right? is there is a rumor that Weapon X is a show in Disney Plus. Uh. <laughs> so you you get your origin of Wolverine out of the way, and then you can just like chuck it. Dude. I, yeah. My only thing is, I hope they don't use the unstable timeline to actually bring them all in. I think that would be kind of a bit weird. Yeah, but it's how they do. It depends on how, like, how they do it. But. Well, like I've said um, before, like the way that I would like to see the X Men introduced is they have been constantly like a small niche of people already, and it, unlike how the X Men in the Fox versions were, that it looked like half of the universe yeah. was a yeah. mutant. <laughs> Like literally make it. I mean, a really, really small niche. What if I, say, this... I think they, they have to like contain. They can't have everything a mutant. What if this it's like Celestials set up? You know the mutant gene, which they probably will, right? Oh, they will. They will. What if yeah. it's Thanos doing the snap in that giant wave that surges and activates a subpopulation across Earth with the mutant gene? So there's a small population, mm -hmm. like a quarter of a quarter of a population. So maybe a couple hundred thousand start popping up during a five-year gap i'd question then why they weren't talking to the avengers in endgame then who the hell knows you can explain that in their own movie i don't know but yeah. i think there's ability to say that the gene was maybe activated during that time or yeah. something and you know it starts ramping up in teenagers maybe it takes a couple years i don't know maybe it was people that were just about to be born during the snap you can you can fiddle around some way but you can't say that they existed the entire time because that's that's too dumb. Well, no, like what you know, like they're in Eternals, so maybe Eternals two then has like something that activates it, right? Because like the, we're only gonna get Celestials like the first ten minutes of this thing, <laughs> and the rest like I'm still put my own Chronos. So like then you save like the Eternals, the Celestials actually coming to Earth, and then when they come here like in Eternals two or whatever, that activates it, mm -hmm. and you can do it that way. But right, I don't know. There's there's too many ways they can do it. And you can't really pinpoint it down. Yeah, that's true. 
So um, I guess that ends the that talk. End of the show, I think. Yeah. 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 All right. <clears throat> got, got a little bonus on the end. Yeah, we, we, got, we got almost two hours worth of shows for you guys today. I told you this would be two hours. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> I told you it would be two hours. We did good. We did good. Only an hour more with the entire running length of Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> well, to our audio commentary, that's where it's happening. So, oh, that's going to be a hard one. All yep. Right. I guess we'll sign off for the main show for you guys. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll be back next week per your normal scheduled podcast. Where, now um, that we're home. Yep. And we'll be scraping <laughs> the bottom of the barrel, probably. Oh, hype.